Right, I've made a new tool for the mini lathe. Well, it's a bit of an upgrade to the um, spindle handle that I made. Um, you might have seen the video on that one. Um, I've taken the back end of my one off of the mandrel and I've made a um, indexing ring that goes on the back now out of aluminium with 24 equally spaced holes and that one's going to go on there like that and then I've got the handle for doing the um, like tapping work and the dyeing or whatever and then I've made an indexing um, adapter so I can do divisional work on the mini lathe now if you saw that video on making this handle um, you'll remember that when I put this um, ring on the back of the mandrel I had a pin that goes down in this hole here with a grub screw and the pin located in a hole on the back spindle there and then I assembled the whole lot with um, Loctite 638 and screwed the grub screw in with the pin and that locked the assembly together um, but since then I have found that the pin and um, grub screw um, part is completely unnecessary um, you can just use um, Loctite 638 um, and that will lock it on there perfectly and um, it won't move at all it will stay in position in fact when I came to take this ring off um, I had trouble getting it off the only way you can actually um, break um, Loctite 638 is if you heat um, something like this up with a gas torch until it's very hot and you see a vapour coming off and then you can knock the spindle out and that's the only way you can actually um, get things apart after using the Loctite 638 now for the um, locating pin assembly on the back um, I've mounted it on the rear gear guard and um, I've used a nice thick piece of brass three millimeter thick I think it is and I carefully marked it out um, so that the um, screws would be in their correct position and nice and square and um, done the center holes to hold this piece of aluminium on and then I put the uh, brass on the top of the guard here drilled down through and um, bolted it on with uh, four um, 4BA steel screws with brass nuts and then I screwed the aluminium part um, up through with the 4BA steel screws and that goes up into the center of the um, aluminium and this part here is um, for the pin to go down through which will locate in the holes on the um, indexing ring um, this uh, aluminium part here is half an inch wide and one inch depth and um, it's very strong on there and when the uh, guards on the back of the lathe um, there is no movement and if you're doing this job um, before you start um, doing this uh, if you've just got a mini lathe you'll find you've got allen bolts in there and um, I made these um, screws up to go in there which make it a whole lot easier to get off you don't have to use an allen key um, it's just five millimeter studding and make a long nailed brass um, nut at the top there and then when they screw in and hold the guard on there's enough protruding um, to get your hands on and undo them without having to use the key so to show you how I aligned the um, pin assembly up I've taken the aluminium block off at the moment um, so if you're making this tool you need to do all the drilling on the um, brass plate um, and the holes for the um, aluminium block 
and fix this to the guard um, before you do the alignment. And because you need to take the guard off several times, um, that's why you need these um, locking bolts that you can undo easily. And they're screwed up nice and tight. It goes back in its position every time and it's um, nice and solid. So next I put the mandrel in the back of the spindle and tighten the nut up on the back to lock it in there and um, on my mini lathe I've noticed the drilled hole in the back of the spindle is running out quite a bit and um, I found that uh, you can true this up by undoing it and moving it round um, to another position at the moment that one's running nice and true I found when um, messing about with it for a while I can get it within a couple of thou and that's so that you can um, obviously get all the holes running in the same line and the pin will go into them easily on turning so at this stage the aluminium block would only have the hole in the end um, for the pin to go in and to get the correct position, um, I put the locate the pin in one of the holes, um, hold it on the top of the brass plate, and there's two scribed lines um, so that I know that I'm going to get that square. Um, held it in between those two lines and made a mark um, on the brass plate and the. Uh, aluminium block, a little scribed mark and um, then you know that it's in the correct position and you can take the whole um, guard off again and hold this on the guard and um, mark um, for the two holes underneath and then um, drill and tap the aluminium block and that is the way you do the alignment of the um, tool. Also you can use a file in the two holes um, where the screws go through into the aluminium block and you can use a small um, Swiss file to file those out a bit so that the block can slide backwards and forwards a bit to get the um, alignment correct. And this is what the brass plate looks like on the top now. Um, it's been filed out both ways um, a bit to give fine adjustment so that you can get the pin going in the holes dead accurate. So then the um, screws go in from the underside with a washer on. And screw into the underside of the aluminium block and tighten those up and it should be in its correct position um, for the pin to go down through and obviously if it's not you can just slacken the screws off a little bit and move it backwards and forwards until you achieve that. Now whenever I'm using the indexing or the handle on the back I make sure the lathe is switched off in neutral but I also have this um, silicon um, bicycle light um, shows up red on the lights and has various different modes and I hang that one on the start stop switch just to remind myself that I'm using this tool and I won't start the lathe up So then you have the quick release um, handle which goes on the back um, which you can use for screw tapping or um, die work or whatever and when this handle is on there it misses the or the back face of the handle misses this block by about five or six millimeter so that's good 
and the whole position um, from this end face um, leaves a nice uh, diameter there which you can actually use a sharpie marker pen on um, to mark whatever holes uh, you're going to be um, drilling or milling on the component and in this case I've marked it up every sixth hole so I would have um, four equally spaced uh, drilled holes in the component or four equally spaced um, milling slots and after use you can just wipe those marks off with a bit of methylated spirits or a bit of fine wire wool or whatever so I've set the mini lathe up for a quick um, test and example and um, I've got um, my tool post drill set to centre height with a um, centre drill in the chuck I've got my um, battery drill on the back um, I would normally use the um, flexi shaft in this situation with another drill but I'm using this one just for this video and just remember to have the lathe switched off and um, I put my um, warning light on just to remind me not to turn it on you'll notice that the um, tool bit is on the far side of the center this is because the mini lathe hasn't got enough uh, room on the cross slide to wind it back this way um, so you achieve the PCD on the front of the component that you're machining by winding it over um, to get that diameter And that's it. And there you have four equally spaced holes on the face of the component. Um, but remember you can do milling work like that. And also you can do the holes around the diameter or the milling on the diameter. So this tool opens you up for um, loads of different jobs that you can do on the lathe and makes the lathe much more versatile. So I'm very pleased with the tool. It's nice and strong and nice and positive. And I think it'll be a great accessory to use on the mini lathe. Right, so that's about it for this video. I'd just like to say before I go that if you're interested in making um, the machine tools that I show in these videos um, to make sure you check out the comments section and any information that I write below um, I often include information there that maybe I've overlooked um, when doing the tools or making the tools and um, any upgrades or changes uh, that I make to the tools over time